God's day. God's thankful Thursday. Y'all come on in. Tag a friend or two. Family. All of them. We do not own the rights to the music that's playing in the background, but we definitely enjoy it and love it. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Tag a friend. Tag two. Get your family together. Um, we thank the Lord for allowing us to wake up today, starting us on our way, um, giving us all the activities of our limb, showing us another beautiful day that was not promised to us. He keep on doing these amazing things for us, and we're just so grateful to God for that, for allowing us to see another day that we on top of the dirt, and the dirt ain't on top of us, okay? Um, and we're just grateful to God for what he's doing, what he's getting ready to do, what he, how he's about to do some things in this season. This is not the end. What you're going through is not the end. It's just a stopping point. It's just a comma. All right? And so you don't have to give up or not believe that God is who he said he's going to What he said he's going to do, he's going to do it. Trust me. Believe in what he said he's going to do. Um, so we're just grateful to God for all the amazing things that he's He's already been doing what he planned on doing in the future, and we're still trusting God and believing in him. Um, we do not own the rights to this music, as I stated before. Um, this is Mary, Mary, Heaven. So just in case you want to go back and you want to listen to this uh, again, <laughs> you'll know where it, who's singing and where it's coming from. Um, so we're just grateful to God. I pray everybody is doing good. That y'all staying safe and y'all staying safe. Okay. And y'all just, um, keeping God in everything that you do, trusting him, knowing that he's going to take care of you, blessing you, holding on to you, doing those great things he's been doing for you. You didn't wake yourself up today. It was him that did it. It wasn't your alarm clock, your phone. Um, it wasn't just any old, it was God that woke you up today. Um, so we're grateful and I'm grateful that he allowed you together with me today on God's day. Sorry, I wasn't on here yesterday. You know, when I have a lot going on, it kind of, uh, takes over. But, um, if you have not already checked out the God's day podcast, please do. You can download those episodes, um, today, right now you can start downloading episodes um, and listening in God's day. How are y'all? Um, you need to, you're so disrespectful. God's day to everybody else. Lynn, she don't, you know, she's hating on this South Oak Cliff Golden Bear High School shirt. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. You know, I do it on purpose for her, you know, cause she, she feels the ways about it. So I do it on purpose. All right. So anyway, let me turn this down for a second. Um, and I'm going to say this probably throughout today with God's Day. Um, a couple of things here. Y'all know I always tell y'all about the God's Day journals. The journals are available on my website, godsday81.com. Go on the store and the um, they are there, okay? Uh, $5. Um, it has the God's Day logo on it. It comes with an ink pen. I show y'all this all the time. It comes with an ink pen. You can close it up, put it in your pocket, your purse, or whatever. These are great stocking stuffers. You can go ahead and order yours on the website today. Um, I know I'm gonna get your shirt. I know I'm gonna get it. Um, God's day, um, journals. They also have, um, lines in here so you can write on the actual line if you want to, but I believe it's like 80 pages or whatever, but they're available on my website, which is God's day 81.com. Click on store and they are available to you. And I have some, so if you are interested, go ahead and order them. Or if you want to meet to get them, so you won't have to pay for shipping. That's fine. You can do that um, just in case you don't want to pay for shipping. Also, we have God's Day t-shirts. They are $12. Their size is small to extra large. Um, and they're for men and women. Uh-oh. So if you want to order your shirt, God's Day Whispers, how are you? How you been? Um, you can order your shirts today and your God's Day journals, as well as for those that y'all probably already seen it on Facebook um, or on Instagram that I now have AirPods for sale. These are Apple AirPods. So if you're interested in it, these are a hundred dollars. So, but you can, if you want to, I don't have but a limited edition. Once they're gone, they're gone. 
and um i'll get some next week i believe um but until then um this is you know i only have a few so if you're interested in order to hold it if you don't have all of it now deposit a 25 dollars you can cash app it to me and that'll hold yours for that time being if you want two it's gonna be 50 dollars. this is just to hold yours so i won't sell it to, to anybody else um so that's why i'm saying it now great in time um like i said <laughs> um if you want to go ahead and get them now you can do a deposit for 25 dollars each for how many ever you want and then i will definitely hold them for you so i won't give them sell them to anybody else um because i have a lot of people saying can you hold them can you make sure can you can you hold them and i'm like i only have a certain amount so somebody come in with theirs then i have to go on. but that secures your yours okay so i'm just letting y'all know they are available i do have i still have some left over um and i also put them on my website but if you order them through the website they're shipping because i have to ship it to you so i'm just letting you know they're on the website too and once they're sold out i'll let everybody know i'm sold out i don't have any more um and preferably i can get them in before some more before christmas but just in case i don't you might want to go ahead and get them all right so i'm just letting y'all know that so i will make this announcement again um in the midst of um god's day today to let y'all know um what's going on for people that may come in and join in later i'm just letting y'all know god's day whisperer um, so I pray everybody has been doing good. Y'all been doing wonderful. As I was saying a few minutes ago, if you have not already went to the God's Day uh, podcast and started listening into our previous episodes, please do so. Um, I'm trying to still upload more. It's been so much going on to where I haven't been able to upload no more than what I've already uploaded. <laughs> so I'm working on uploading some more. Y'all pray for me. Um, I have 75,000 jobs and I'm trying to touch everything so um with that being said though please go out there and download i will attach the link to this um live so you can just click on it and start downloading your episodes right then and there and i believe we up to like 240 something i think of course i have more so um download them listen to them in your own free time any ones that we've done prior to this um to this year for um god's day it will be on our um youtube channel which is whispers in the pews so um if you can go in and follow us or subscribe to our channel which is whispers in the pews on youtube and you can start listening to our previous videos from like early early last year and um listen to some great stuff that we had because we were able to add people on the live and listen to some stuff and you know whatever so you can go back and listen to those episodes and you can see how we started out god's day whisper you can see how we started out with um doing this as of now um and i'm grateful to god for it i do want to say i appreciate each and every last one of you all for joining in with me when i do god's day for liking anything that i post uh, for following on all social media platforms anything you do for god's day sporting your god's day uh products or whatever i owe miss um miss felicia and i owe lynn a t-shirt and i still i got y'all i still got y'all shirts um but i need to get it to y'all <laughs> so pray for me um but i will have them for y'all um but i just wanted to make sure that i gave that information out to y'all of course i'm gonna have so the pod the airpods is a part of a new business that my daughter youngest daughter and i have started up which is um collins affordable boutique of course my husband is in it y'all already know that but you know he just he falls to the back he just be like okay whatever y'all want whatever you want to do um or no i don't want to he he put his input so i'm just saying this is something we did um that we're working on she's the the foreman because i'm the person that's just gonna be on the background and just you know ask questions and do whatever else but the business page is just on instagram right now i'm not really trying to do a facebook page for for this because i'm already managing a lot of pages as is <laughs> so um I just wanted to um, let you all know that. So if you see me saying Collins Affordable Boutique, that's where it's coming from. So I got some more stuff coming. Like I said, it's probably going to take a little while before it to come in. But I will still put them on my website so that you can just order whatever you want at that on just on my website instead of going all these other places and finding them and um, ordering them then. So again, that that's where the AirPods come in at. And like I said, I do have some available um 25 for each one deposit if you want to hold yours because i only have a, have a limited amount and then i will um hold yours for sure um i won't get rid of them i just feel like i don't have no more for everybody else that, do, that wants to do them so just to let you all know that and hopefully i can get the next the next ones in before christmas and if not 
then it'll have to be after Christmas, okay? So um, I just wanted to let you all know that. And I'm trying to make sure I sell all of that. So the podcast, don't forget about the website, guysay81.com. Check out, um, if you have not already signed up to be an email subscriber to get inf new information before everybody else, please go on to the website and type in or put in your email address, your name and email address, and it'll send me a notification that you are part of um, the new um, email subscribers list, and then you get new information before everybody else. Okay, so y'all know about all that. I'll tell y'all about all that kind of stuff. Okay, so my husband and I, I'm getting to the real deal now. My husband and I had a really nice conversation early. I was reading on one of the, and somebody probably tagged them in it or let them know, and quite frankly, this is my opinion on how I feel about this, and y'all know how we've been talking about COVID and um, church, and we go everywhere else and all that other kind of stuff, but me and my husband and I was talking to my husband and I was talking about this conversation earlier about how people blame the church for where they got COVID at. Okay. So I seen this article this morning where it was talking about this guy um um had posted and said people were telling him that he, that he got COVID at a funeral, which is Pastor Rance Allen. Y'all probably already seen it. Bishop Rance Allen, excuse me, let me get his, get him to get that right. Bishop Rance Allen, people were saying that he got um that they got COVID at that particular and they call it an event you know they call it it says event um and again you know this is my this is my belief this is what i feel this is how i see this um so like i said him and i was talking about it and i said it's amazing to me how we blame the church for everything that goes wrong but when things go right nobody wants to say oh that's true that's what the church said like i said from the beginning of all of this with the covid and and whatever uh people uh, God was testing all of us, Christians and non non Christians, non believers and believers. He was testing all of us to see where our faith was. See, and Bishop talked about fear the other night to see why our faith is, to see why we're so fearful. Or because of the things you learned in Sunday school, you growing up and they taught you all this fear not and yada 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 believe and yada yada yada. Jesus is this. true, but now you have to put those action. This is the season now with this COVID or with whatever you've been dealing with this year. With losing loved ones and vice versa, whatever. Um, this is the year where God has been testing all of us. I was reading a text message. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> God's Day Whisper, how are you? So my my question, my thing is, y'all blame they blamed the church and they were saying, Oh, the church, God's day whisper, how are you, lady? They blame the church for where they got COVID at. But I guarantee, like I told my husband, before they even got to the funeral, I promise you, they probably went to Walmart. They went to the gas station. They stopped over and got something to eat. They probably sat at, at, a, a, at a spot and ate a breakfast or whatever. Before they went to this funeral, they went and bought a dress or some stockings or probably got them a new wig or something before they went. But because you all gathered at this at church, now the church is the reason why you got COVID. But you've been everywhere else. Walmart is filled with thousands of people in and out of that store. I guarantee you this, and I don't know how many people have even aware of this. The people that stock the shelves, how you know when they stock the shelf, they didn't wipe their nose or they didn't sneeze and they put the stuff on the shelf and we go behind them and grab it. So you didn't get COVID at Walmart or at the grocery store or at the car wash or at the uh, gas station. We blame the church for that. So y'all put that I got COVID because I attended a funeral. That's, to me, that's like, and I'm, I'm like I told my husband, if he hadn't died and they still got COVID, who would they have blamed it on? Because you was going to have, you going to blame it. Well, I went around such, I'm pretty sure you've been to a party or you went to some type of gathering or you went and hung out somewhere. You walked inside of a store, you done something. Y'all, this is my feelings. This is just me. So everybody, you know, if people may feel a ways about it, be like, that's it. And I'm not saying don't be careful or don't use wise decisions. But what I'm saying is people blame the church for everything that goes wrong. When they going through and God didn't give them what they want, it was a church that did it. Because they, the pastor didn't sing your song or then he, you, you, you felt like, what he preached about was about you and he don't know your situation, but it's the church fault. We blame it on the church. And then, like I said, the test that God has given the Christians, this, the, the believers this year, we failed. A lot of us failed because we felt like 
oh, I need to, I need to do this. I need to do that. Like I said, be, 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 uh, smart about decisions that you do. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is folks that always, they always have a guy's day whisper. A lot of people have a lot, they feel a ways and they always blame the church. And like I said, I guarantee you before, because this funeral was in, in motion for about two weeks. I think he died two weeks prior to them having his funeral or a week or so after. It was a, a good minute. And within that time frame, where you been before you went to that funeral? And because you end up getting it, now it's just now coming out, what, four weeks later, three weeks later that y'all got COVID from going to his funeral? So y'all blame this man? I'm just asking a question. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just see it different. So my husband and I was talking about it, and he said, that's what I'm talking about. Folks blame everything on the wrong things, on the church. And, and us, a lot of believers or a lot of leaders have failed this test because we just don't. We fall and we say we don't fear. I don't fear nothing. I they, 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 they. But we doing that. We doing that. We don't mind going everywhere else. But when it comes to church, it's just like, nah, we ain't gonna do that. We ain't gonna have that. We ain't gonna do. We ain't gonna. No, be be smart. Be mindful. Be all that. I'm good with that. But what I'm saying is, when it comes down to actually believing in God and trusting that He's gonna take care of you and heal you, um, where we do we really believe that, or we just still folding and just saying, you know, well, you know. But we're not telling people to shut down a party. We're not telling people to shut down a gathering. We ain't telling people to do that. We ain't telling them. To, but we just telling folks to shut down churches or don't go to church or because that's where you're going to get the virus at. But you've been to Walmart. I promise you, you don't know five people in that, in that Walmart that you can say you can trust. They, I don't care if you run to people you know. I'm pretty sure you probably don't touch something in there. As careful as we all are. You probably touched something in there that somebody don't touch that possibly doesn't have it. And you don't brought it home. Your tissue, your your toothpaste, your, your your blouse that you don't bought, the gas handle at the at the gas station. I'm just saying, some things we just and we blame it on the wrong things. God don't want us to fear. He does not want us to be scared and run scared and just be, you know, and I folks can have their own beliefs and they can believe what they want to. Um now I was talking about this one situation that I seen and I felt a ways about it because I'm sitting up there saying y'all blame this on this man that is no longer here on earth and because y'all decided he didn't make you come you wanted to be there y'all decided to come and be a part of that and now that you are a part of it now you blaming it that's where you got it from before you went, I promise you, you went. You didn't leave. Wait, this man died this particular day. You didn't wait until his funeral, and you left straight from home and went to that funeral. I guarantee you. But it wasn't. It wasn't like nobody put a gun to your head and made you go. Nobody forced you to go. You went, and when you went, this is what happened. All I'm saying is, why do we blame the church for everything when things go bad and when they go wrong? We run scared. We're fearful. We, we not. And again, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying when it comes down to knowing that to be smart about things or to, to be mindful of your, you know, your social distancing and washing your hands and put, wearing your mask and all that. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm just talking about the things that people have. They fail to to. Be, I feel like they believe that we say we believe in. We believe in God and I trust God. We don't really do that. That's just like you saying, um, I also forgot what I was going to say with that. <laughs> but it's just, it's, it, it's, it's, it's weird to me that people feel like that's the thing. That's the life that we, we, this is what we're living now. And it's just like, okay, well, if you don't believe as you being a true believer, as you say you are, how you going to get somebody else that don't believe and you doing the same thing they doing? You're running scared just like they are, but you're supposed to be closer to God than this person, but you're not really believing like they are. So then what? Now what you got? How you going to draw somebody closer to God and you not really believing well? I'm, 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 I've been invited, but if they don't shut down my church, okay, good, good. If they shut down your church because some things have went on, I get that. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about folks that they didn't even give it a chance. They was just like, no, they shutting down the store. It's shutting down the, the whatever. And they just not going to open up anymore. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the folks that just, you just, and well, I'm, I'm, you still going to work. You still going to the gas station. You still going to Walmart. You don't been to somebody's house. You don't been to a funeral. You don't been somewhere where there have been more than, and you don't grab the handle of the door. You don't went in there and touch some pens or paper or wall, something. And in the midst of all of that, you didn't wash your hands in between. Hand sanitizer is 99.9. .9. Okay, I'm not going to even go into that. I know it's... <laughs> Miss Felicia, I'm reading your comment. I know it's not just you. People have said to me, you're going to church. And I said, yes. And I say, 
We go everywhere else. Why not church? If and, and I said this, and I don't, I don't a, a while back. If there is it that God give it, doesn't mean that you're gonna die from it. Cause now, if you do country, if you do get it, I'm not gonna blame the church, but I do want God to know. Even if I did get it, coming in or after church, do know that I came in with my best praise. I gave it my all. And I don't want you to deny and say, well, you you ran three weeks ago and you didn't want to come back because of this or what? No, no. I want God to know that I'm still coming. I'm still doing my best. Yeah, I told y'all a few weeks ago, I didn't feel well. I had a migraine that woke me up so early in the morning. It, it just, ugh, it was horrible. But I still got up and got dressed like it wasn't nothing wrong with me. I still came with that expectation that I'm going to receive. God's still going to heal me. And still got still gonna gonna take care of me. And that's that's the belief that I had, but that's also the expectation that was in my mind. My mindset was I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get through this. God is gonna bless me. I'm not gonna be worried about this migraine. Once I get to church and start having some church and I started, you know, thanking God for what he's done for me. I guarantee you, he going to heal this. He going to take that away. And if you don't trust and you don't believe, how do you, how do you, uh, believe in your heart or how do you accept that, that if you saying God is going to heal my body, do you actually believe that? Or you just saying it cause that's what they, you've been taught to say, or oh, that's what, that's what the norm is. That's what other folks is doing at church. If you don't believe it in your heart, how you think God, he know your thoughts. I promise you, he, I told you a long time ago, he know how many hairs is on your head. You don't know. But he know your thoughts. He know what you're thinking before you even think about it. He know what you're going to think about. He know what you're going to say. He know what, what you're about to do. He know you. All the people in the world, he know everybody. He know everything that everybody's going to do because he is God. He's sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to whenever he get ready. That's the type of God that we serve. But if we're not believing, then what are we doing? If you don't, you don't trust God to heal, to deliver you, to set you free, to do some things that he said he was going to do in his word, then what, what, we, what we doing then? It, it's, it's, it's pointless to go. It's pointless to do it. It's pointless to say, I believe and I trust God. If you really don't believe in your heart and you trust God, he's a healer. He, he don't want us to be fearful. I'm not saying, again, that not, not to be smart and not to, to be uh, wise about decisions, about washing your hands, by protecting yourself, staying your social distance, all of that. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking about people that is just saying, well, I'm going over here to the, to the, to the grocery store and I'm doing all of this, but now I ain't going to church. What are we afraid of church for? That's from when I was growing up. And I'm not that old, but when I was growing up, I was always taught the church is your hospital. That's where you go when you sick and you down or you going through and you need. The church was the hospital. God, say what's for? Hey, lady, how are you? Listen, I got to take this blanket off of me. Church was your hospital. You did not fear going to church to be healed. That's where you went before you. I'm not going to trust the doctor over. I'm going to trust God. I know what God can do for me, but I don't know this person that's about to check me out. I don't know this person that's about to check me in into the ER or, or the person that's about to give me a shot or to take my blood pressure. I don't know them. I know God, though, and I know what he can do. I know how he, he's a way maker. I know he can heal my body when I listen. I can call on him when I can't call on nobody else. Listen, <laughs> listen, you need to mind your business. You mind your business. Y'all don't mind her. You don't mind her. OK, Miss Kristen, I'm reading your comment. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, she got some on here. If you watch the video, they were not following the social distancing guidelines, but also in the same breath, a lot of places and people are not following the social distancing guidelines either. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Stand on Psalms 91, follow the laws of the land and you go everywhere else, but put, but on, put on your mask and keep it pushing. I, I will be at my church on Sunday. I trust the Lord all the way. I go to work and several people at job at, jo at my job caught the COVID and I still go to work every day. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. First Timothy 1 and 7. Come on. Hi, Awana. How are you guys day? Guys day whisper. Everybody that's just joining on. I'm just saying, I'm with you, Miss Kristen. And, and my thing is, even if you got it, um, you end up getting it. How do we pinpoint if you've been everywhere else? How do you pinpoint? I got it from church. That's the only place you've been in the time that you left your house and you went to the church to, to this funeral. That's the only time that you and now if you that person, I ain't talking about the people. I ain't talking about them, but I'm talking about the one that blamed God or blamed the church for what they what they went through or what they got. And you just like, but nobody made you go. 
And I know they said a lot of people was wearing masks or whatever, but they were, they were a lot of people in there and they was not doing no social distancing. But I don't know if everybody wanted to be there because of who it was or if everybody wanted to be there so they can be seen or to know that they were there or whatever. Even though this is going on, this is still a popular thing that's happening right now. But just to hear that people, and then this is what got me the most. And I told my husband this. I said, this is what got me the most out of all of this. The fact that somebody's platform with thousands of people that follow them, maybe millions, I don't even know, that follows them, what they did was they told them, they said it. I told y'all about going. Okay, y'all still there? Can y'all hear me? Can you hear me? I'm back. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Thumbs up, hearts, whatever. Um, but as I was stating before, okay, good, thank you. Um, as I was stating before, um, the person used their platform. They used their particular platform with millions of people on there. And they said, y'all haven't learned yet about going to church. And, it, and what people do is they grasp on to that and say, you know what, you right, I ain't going to church because you put that out there. But like I said before, when I was growing up, the church was your hospital. That's where you went when you was feeling down. And that's why I said, I know I've been suffering with migraines for years, but... And I know it can't take over your life if you allow it to. But I have to have the faith and I got to trust God. And I believe in him and I know because he's healed me before of going through migraines or whatever. And I know he's going to do it again. And what? And, and if I don't have that type of faith, where do you think I'm going to be? I'm not going to be at church. I'm going to be at the hospital. I'm going to be at the ER. I'm going to be checking in, going to make an appointment. It's because I'm not believing and trusting God that he said he can heal you. He can take care of you. God say whisper. I'm not trusting God then. And if I don't trust God on what he said he's going to do, then what you think is going to happen? I'm going to always be on the opposite side. Now, I'm a, to me, I'm just like a, a part-time Christian. I trust God up until a certain point. And then when that point of me not trusting God no more, now I'm going back to the, uh, now I'm going to the other side. No, I got the, I got to trust God all the way. I'm not going to halfway trust him. If I know in my heart and I believe it in my heart that God is going to heal me, he's going to take care of me, he's going to do what he said. That's what I'm going to do. Other than that, it's point. And then I would never tell somebody, don't go there. You make your own judgment. You do what you got to. But I would never tell nobody not to go to church. I'm not going to ever tell you that. I'm not going to ever tell you, oh, you need to leave your church. Oh, you need to go stop going. Up. I'm not going to ever tell you things like that because you got to, when push come to shove, when it's all said and done, you got to see God for yourself. It's a one on one. Now it's you and God. It's you and him. And you have to make that decision for yourself. Well, they told me not to go to church. You're going to go to hell behind somebody else because they don't believe or because they don't trust it. I remember listening to this, this one guy. He's really, um, he has a really great platform um, or whatever, but he used to be on the radio. And um, years and years ago, oh, this was years ago, I remember him talking about, and you can tell the ones that don't believe and the ones that believe by the conversation that they have or by the topic that they talk about. And they haven't experienced God for themselves. I'm not, I'm not talking about the man's uh, judgment on, on um, but I'm just saying, I could tell he wasn't a church goer. Let me just put it like that, because I don't want to put it out there that this guy is, you know, whatever. I, I'm just going to say he's not a church goer, okay? So what happened was he had a topic about somebody had wrote in to him telling him that they had, um, they needed assistance with their bill, whatever bill it was, and whatever, and we was going to say a gas bill. Um, but they, they had to pay their tithing too. So he told them they were stupid if they paid their tithing and not pay their gas bill. But mind you, the person, if you know about tithing and you trying to choose between tithing and paying your bill, that means you know to pay your tithing. You know you're, you're a church goer. You know God, okay? You know where, okay? So with that being said, he went on there, he went on a rant, just like, oh, why people are so stupid. They pay their tithing over the pain. You better pay your bills and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, oh, I wasn't upset with him because he said 
Uh, but, but he don't know because he don't go to church. So my thing when my husband talked about that, that was years ago, we talked about that. And But my thing is we use platforms for things like that. And you just like, wow, folks is telling folks to not to believe and trust God. And you pay your tithing first and you're going to trust God is going to take care of the rest. When I tell you that's the absolutely good, the good truth. Believe me, that's the absolutely good truth. God is not going to let you fail. He's not going to not take care of his kids. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you trust in God, yes, it's a sacrifice. Yes, you're going to have to sacrifice some things, sacrifice what you got to do. To, but but that's, that, that's where that trust come in at. And when he said it, I said, wow, he got millions of people that's listening in. And a lot of them, they do believe in, in paying their tithing. They probably stopped paying their tithing because he said that. He told that woman, you stupid if you pay your, your bill and you didn't pay your tithing. That's dumb. I don't understand why folks sit up there and do it. And I said, wow, wow. Your beliefs got turned around in a matter of seconds. Because he don't believe, he's making you not believe. These are things that you have to, if you're, like I've been saying before, you're accountable for things that you know. God can't hold you accountable for things. If you don't know, then you can't be held accountable for it. You, I mean, that's like a kid. Like, you, I can't whoop you if you don't know. I'm trying to teach you why you're not supposed to be doing this or you're not supposed to touch it that's hot or whatever. I'm just going to whoop you right off the bat and you don't know. But you have a lot of people that... Um, that believe in in that and because of the platform that they're on that's what they draw people to that's that's how they get people to but then you just like wow i really pray that that woman did not change excuse me she did not change how she felt she still paid her her tithing and god was gonna take care of the rest now you got a testimony because somebody that didn't believe told me not to pay my tithing and to, and to pay my my uh my bill and i didn't i trusted god not this person that told me not to i trusted god god went on and, and took care of that bill for me because what if you paid that tithing that you were supposed to be paying and god said you know what you know what you did with the opposite of what somebody else told you not to do. You know what I'm going to do? You ain't got to pay this bill for three months. I already took care of you. got credits here and there. Listen, when God can do those kind of things, you can keep calling and say, I know I got a, I got a balance out there. But no, God said, you've been taking care of me. Why am I not going to take care of you? You've been doing what you're supposed to be doing for me. And you think I'm not going to take care of you? No, no. I'm, I got you. But you trusted me. You believed in me. You had a naysayer. <laughs> A non-believer that didn't trust and it's because he didn't understand tithing he has not been he didn't he said it I don't I didn't grow up in church so me as being a person that didn't grow up in church you ever pay my bills I'm not gonna pay no tithe I'm gonna get a church my money he went down that whole little line of you know that little rant of not going to church and all that and why would I get a pastor my money and all and people don't realize you're not giving the pastor your money you're giving it to the church and then Furthermore, you're giving it to God. That's what you're supposed to do. Pay your tithe in an offering. It's Malachi. All right. You, you got to. You, these are things that we, we, we got to do. And then, like I said, once you start knowing what these things are, you are held accountable. You got to do it. You can't hold your tithing. Let me tell you something. I did that. I've been down that road where I wasn't paying no tithing. I wasn't doing none of that. And God made sure. He made sure he got his. And all he had to do, he said, if you just give me this 10%, you don't even have to wear it, but I won't touch the rest of it. I do, I'm old the rest of it, but let me say this. Let me say this, and I know I said this before because we talked about tithing a lot of times, but I know I said this before where um, we feel like that God can't, he can't do what he, you know, he going to take it away from He'll put a hole in your pocket. When he, when I tell you he'll put a hole in your pocket, you'll be like, what? I had $500 in my pocket, baby. You don't buy three tires, four tires. You don't buy the wonder. You have to put some gas in your car. You have to buy groceries. You just like, listen, this money was supposed to last me. No, no, he took it right off top. And you bought stuff that you wouldn't even, you didn't need to buy. But how you got a, how you got a flat four days in one week? That's because you didn't give your money on Sunday. And if you want them kind that ain't going to give your money on, 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 on Sunday or you going to spend it between now and you, the time you go, call your church, whoever's in charge, and send your money in. Meet them somewhere, put it in church mailbox, put it on a money order, get your cash, your check, pay your money, okay? Give your tithing so you can continue to be blessed. You don't want that, that little... That little break in your blessing. You know how you be like, oh, God is on the road. He doing this. I'm paying my tithe and everything is going good. Bills paid. Yada, yada, yada. 
And then you go on, and then you did the next time you get paid, be like, I already got um did that, so I'm just gonna hold my time. I'm just gonna not gonna pay that much. I'm gonna put something on it. And when you put something on it, now God don't put something on your blessing. He don't pull something off of it. He's just like, nah, you ain't getting this because you should have did what you're supposed to be doing. You know who I am. You know what I'm about. You know how I can I can I can do you any kind of way I want to do you because you not believe you not trusting me. And or you trying to you trying to play me for a fool. So you try to pay some and you ain't want to pay all. Oh, okay, cool. But I'm just what I'm saying is um make wise decisions no matter what. No nope, make wise decisions. <laughs> I sound like bishop. Oh, I'm you know, that's my husband. We've been married almost 18 years, so you know. You know, I, I I've been been around him for a good a, a quite a good good many. But uh I will say that make wise decisions on whatever you're doing. You ain't got to listen to me, you ain't got to take my word for it, you ain't got to do any of that. I'm not talking to people that already, I'm not, you know, you know I'll tell y'all that, but I'm talking about people that um may be still like struggling with a lot of things or not believing in a lot of things. And like I said, you don't have to, you don't have to take my word for it. Um, try God for yourself. When I tell you, when you see what God can do for you in your life, personally for you, not somebody else, you watch God move in their life. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about personally, he's moved in your life and he's done some things for you that you can testify to and say you know what god did that for me it wasn't me it wasn't my man it wasn't my woman it wasn't my kids it was god that did this for me that opened this door for me or he healed my body i supposed to i have a, a situation that i um a disease that i had for five years and they told me by the time i turned this age i wasn't gonna be alive but i don't i lived that by two years i don't i lived that by five years so i see what god has done in my life but when you start believing that and you're really like believing in your heart, not just saying it, but actually believing it in your heart that that's what God can do and how God can handle things, I promise you, it's going to be a different feeling than what you're just witnessing through somebody else. When you when you can witness what God has done for you each and every day, man, I'm in the greatest thing he's ever done for you is woke you up. You got a chance, another chance to get things right, to get your life in order. He don't, he don't, everybody don't have that chance. Everybody don't have that opportunity. Everybody don't have the, the way they can hear. Some people, they still suffering. They trying to hear. Some people trying to see. Some people trying to, trying to smell. You, you got folks that going through COVID that can't even smell. They're still suffering through some things, but you got all your senses. You got all of your, so you can touch, you can feel, but you got all of your senses and you don't want to, you don't want to do right. You don't want to live for God. He can take every little sense that you have and remove it away from you uh, uh, just a little bit at a time. And he don't need your permission. He don't have to ask you, do I, should I take this away from you? He don't have to do those things. But a lot, a lot of people don't, they don't, they don't fail this year. And they, then them being saved for 79 years, they have failed this year. A lot because of uh, some things somebody have said to them. The non-believers have put in their head. Y'all stupid. Y'all dumb. Y'all shouldn't be doing that. Y'all shouldn't be doing it. And you and folks, they take on to that. And you just like, you let somebody wipe God right out your mind. Just that fast. You let God, um, you let somebody put doubt in your mind about God. You don't have no doubt. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind about what God can do. I know what he can do. And not only do I know what he can do for, for me personally, but for things I've seen him move in somebody else's life some things they have been praying on for for they for themselves that somebody that i mean that god has done for them and and it's a it's a it's a i'm telling you it's a wonderful feeling just to see what god has done for somebody else you be excited or happy about what god does in other people's lives you 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 got to be excited if you're not excited about somebody else's blessing how do you want god to bless you you can't listen miss Kristen. don't ever doubt god you can't ever doubt him what you doubting him for you know what he can do you seen him work in your life but somebody put some type of doubt in your mind somebody took you away from him somebody showed you something that you thought god couldn't show you listen when i tell you god showed you some stuff and you let somebody else come in and swivel you out of it now you letting the devil talk to you and i'm telling you folks do this kind of stuff and then the first thing i don't know why people got to sit there and talk no because you're wrong you i'm wrong if i don't say what god is laying on my heart if i don't if i'm wrong if god if i don't do um, if I don't tell you what you're doing wrong, you see what I'm saying? Not just pointing out, oh, you wrong. You're going to hell. I'm just saying people have the belief, the faith, the fear that people have now is different. If you look back and you just be like, wow, like Miss Felicia just said, people ask her, do you still go to church? Yeah, I've been to Walmart. 
And and like I said, our church, we have been having the same few people that's coming every week. And trust me, y'all know, y'all see us. We social distance and we family, but we everybody just stay their distance and we serve God and we go on. And God has been keeping us and he's been, he, and we believe and we trust God. And that's what my husband was saying. He said, if I'm, if I'm, uh, don't trust God, how can I make other people believe to trust God? I said, exactly. And I trust him because like I said, I seen what he can do for me. I seen how he can work things out on a Sunday. You're not feeling your best, but you putting your all into it. And God just heal you in the midst of that service. Ooh, he healed you right then and there. And I'm not going to trust God. I'm not going to believe in him. Come on now. Come on. I'm just saying some people just and, and they take that those kind of things for um, for granted. And they feel like, oh, well, no, God is not going to do that. He'll do it for them. He, but if you got that mindset that God going to do it for them and not for you. Exactly. That's what's exactly because you spoke it into existence. I told you your tongue, your tongue is powerful. What you say, what you say. It, it can come into existence. It can come. Why would you put, you speak that over yourself? A oh, service ain't going to be good. I ain't going to like this. I ain't going to do. If, if that's what you're speaking, that's what's going to happen. Your tongue is powerful. Watch what you say, how you say things, because what you're speaking over your life can actually be a part of your life. Oh, I'm going to be dead by the time I'm 30. It can happen because that's what you believe in. Now, why you can't believe that God can save you? He can he can set you free from all the addictions that you are that you holding on all this stuff that's holding you back. You don't think God can heal you from it? He can take those things away. He can. You want to stop cussing? He can take those that cussing spirit, that cussing demon away. You you want to stop drinking? He can do it. You want to stop smoking? He can take that away from you. But you got to believe in your heart, and that's something that I really want to get rid of. I want to stop being a part of the mess. Do it. Tell God what you need, but you got to believe it and you got to do the work. You can't just say, oh, this is what I want to do and God just going to take it away. Do the work. If there, if yo, if, if, if this thing I always come, if you're a womanizer, you, or you like, but you just got to have men all up on you. You can't live without men and you trying to get rid of all that. You got to tell God, listen, these are things that we got to do. Uh, <laughs> these are things we got to do. Uh, let me see. People need to come out of the church mindset and go to the kingdom realm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6 and 33. We should be given on, given on three realms, time, talent, and treasure. You are supporting the God's kingdom when you give on these three realms. It is our reasonable service that we give in these come on miss christy come on teach somebody come on see people this is what folks fail to realize too and i think i'm glad you brought that up miss Kristen. a lot of people oh a lot of people fail to realize is because they may not work or they their income is not um let me, let me i don't want to do income if you if you don't work you or you don't have income coming in to pay your tithing you need to, yes, you need to do something, um, giving your time into the church. And we had a, oh, we had a big, um, Bible study on, um, tithing a while back. Oh, it was so, it was so good. It was some questions that was asked that was just like, wow, I didn't even know that. And some things we miss because we don't like to talk about things like that. Folks don't like to talk about giving a money and talking about giving up addiction or talking about doing all these things. They don't, folks don't, they don't be want to hear about that. So they'll click off your live. They don't want to tune in. They don't want to, they want you to say, yes, this is what it is. Guys, they whisper, how are you? You got people that's out here that just want to do, they, they just want to live this life. They just want to do what they want to do. They don't want you to tell them that they're wrong. They want to live the life they want to live. Now, when I show up to church, that's what I want to show up to church to do. And then when I leave, they like bishops say, they, they, they uh, shout the dirt out the carpet and they go on about their business. And they still do the same thing. And you and pastors and preachers, they live their life uh, trying to teach people right from wrong and halfway killing themselves, trying to tell folks to do the right thing, and they're going to be hard-headed anyway. And that's why I told my husband, I said, a lot of times, folks going to do what they want to, and you can pump and prime and tell folks right from wrong for the longest. And what they fail to do, let me turn this down, because she's doing a, holl a lot of hollering. Y'all might not hear her, but she hollering in my ear, and it's, it's, it's a little much. Um, but a lot of people don't like to hear about that because they don't want to be told wrong. I don't want to change. I want to say I'm saved, but I don't, I'm not saved. You know, it's like part-time saved. I'm saved on Sundays and that's it. Or I'm only saved when I come to church on Wednesday night for Bible study or whatever. That's the type of savedness that they are. That's not what that is. That's not, that's, that's not what it is. But 
overall that um people don't realize you can give your time um and if you don't have the income you don't have income coming in give your time um come in and and do something else for god like you got to work and a lot of people don't want to work we we put god on the back burner we tell him later on i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna pick you up later on god like i got to go do this and you have to realize if it wasn't for God, would you be able to do the things that you're doing? Would you be able to, to, to see? Would you be able to smell? It's some things that people are suffering with that you're not suffering with, but you give God, I, I'll get back with you when I get time. Really? How much time do you think you got? How much time do you think that you have to, to, to give God or, or to worship him? How much time? That's why I say every second that you get the opportunity. I just tell the God, thank you. And I could be sitting here at my desk working. And I'd be like, Lord, I thank you. Because this could have been a worse situation. And when you think about somebody or when you read something on social media, you'd be like, that could have been me. I could have been the one that's, that's dealing with this situation this person is dealing with. They, they got so much other things going on. But you look like my life is more, I'm complaining about the little few things that's going on with me. But my life is peaceful when it comes to looking at somebody else's life. When you were looking at somebody else going through on social media or they get dealing with cancer or they dealing with COVID or they dealing with whatever, and you're just like, Lord, that's not me. Lord, I thank you. You ain't even got to go into no details about all this. Well, you know, and listen, when you look at somebody else and you're just like, that could be me laying up in the bed trying to get over this sickness or trying to figure out if this is going to be the end for me. Let me tell you something. You don't have to, but if you don't believe that, don't say it. Don't don't even don't even take that. Listen, because he is cousin. Hey, cousin, how are you? You should give these tithings. Uh, you should give tithes on earned and unearned income. So if you get an SSI check, come on, Miss Kristen, you finna start something. And I'm trying to be. I was trying not to go there, but you about to start something. You always do this to me. Always. Listen, if you get an SSI check or a Social Security check or a retirement check. Or unemployment check, you should give tidings off of that. Okay, Miss Kristen, you don't start it something. I was gonna let this go. I was gonna get my little ending. I was gonna get out for here. Okay. But since she brought it up, let me go ahead and say this, and then I'm gonna leave y'all alone. Listen, you are absolutely correct. When we talked about, I told you we had a big uh, discussion or a Bible study on tithing for weeks. It was weeks and people kept coming back with questions. And Bishop was asking, um, or some, I think somebody was asking um, when they get their income tax check. Um, I'm good. How are you? When they get their income tax checks, should they pay tithing off of that? He said, absolutely. Absolutely. You uh, listen, why, why you think you, you it's, it, it's extra. It wasn't yours. I mean, it wasn't, it, it, it came in extra. It wasn't like you just, you know, it was already there. It came in. So it's income, it's income tax. So yes, you're supposed to pay tithing off of that. Let me say this. And I said this before, a lot of times, this is why we, we, we have not realized. I won't even say a lot of time, but a, a lot of us have not realized why when we play the lottery, we don't win the lottery. Oh, they, they, the lottery is up to such and such million dollars, $202 million. And we try to go play and try to win that money. And we wonder why God does not bless us to win that money. You're not doing right with the income you have now. So you think God going to bless you with more? And you're not even doing right with the, the amount you have now? You, come on. He going, oh, okay, I'm going to give you more. And you can't take care of the little bit I already gave you. I, you want a better car. But your car, you're not taking care of the little car you got now. You want to upgrade to, to a better phone, but the phone you got, you ain't taking care of. You want to upgrade to a better job, but you're not doing right on this job. You want to be a manager, but you can't handle being at entry level. You think God going to keep blessing you with more? And you can't, you can't, um, uh, no, you don't know how to manage the little that he gave you. He going to give you, I, I don't understand. He gave you all of this and you can't even take care of a little bit. So why would I bless you with nice things or more things or bigger things or upgrade you to more? And you can't handle this because the first thing we do, we got to listen when we win a lottery. When I win a lottery, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that. I'm going to get a church. Excuse me. Let me back up. I'm going to get a church deals. I'm going to get them 10% off of me winning the lottery. And then I'm going to buy my mama a car. I'm going to buy me a car. I'm going to get my brother him down. I'm going to get in. We're going to go down the list on what we're going to do with this money. And that's why God has not blessed to, us to win. that Because he know you was lying when you opened up your mouth. When you thought about it, he knew you was lying. So you went down and spent your money on playing the lottery. And you're not going to win because... You're not doing right with the job money, the income that you got coming in now. You're not doing right by that. So you think God's going to bless you with that? 
He's not. That's not the way he is. He is not the author of confusion. He's not going to confuse us. Oh, okay, Lord, you been bless me with this job. I'm not even, I'm, I, I haven't paid uh, tithing in eight months. And now I'm going to get this, this increase in whatever, or I'm going to win a lottery. And now that I don't want this, now I can pay my tithing. You're going to put him on hold for six months, and now you're going to pay your tithing when you get some more money? He don't work like that. I promise you he don't work like that. He's trying. He wants you to try him with this little bit. And I can bless you with, with more. If you just try me with the little bit that you have, watch how I can bless you with more. But you got to be steady. You got to have the faith. You got to believe in me that I'm going to take care of you with this little bit. It's a sacrifice. Absolutely it is. Yes, you just looking like, you know what I can do with this extra? But then when you think about it, you're just like, but God can do more with this 10 than I'm trying to do with this 90. Let me just go ahead and give him his first. And I know he's going to make sure my bills get paid. I know he's going to make sure that my, me and my family eat. I know he's going to make sure that I have gas. I know he's going to make sure that I know he gonna make sure that my health is good. Because I'm taking care of him and it's not. Like I told y'all, his blessings don't always come in the form of money or materialistic things. Sometimes it's your help. It's sometimes it's missing a car accident. Sometimes it's missing a robbery. They've been doing robbers like crazy around in, 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 in this world. They've been doing robbers all around, shootings and stuff. Sometimes your life is spared differently. Your life is blessed differently. It does not have to be in the form of money. It does not have to be a new phone, a new car, a new house. It can be something different. Life getting, I'm, I'm just saying, if you think about it, you don't have to wait. I'm just waiting on the Lord to bless me with 500 more dollars. Why? When you want to be, if you're not here to, to he bless you with the 500, but you're not here because you, you don't did something else. You, some, say, okay, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to go. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to go. I'm going I'm to go. I'm going to go. Uh, also, if your IRS return, lotto winnings, if, for example, scratch. Everything that you get in extra is supposed you supposed to give a tithing off of. I don't care if somebody give you a gift and say, hey, I just want to bless you with ten dollars. You need to pay your tithing off of that gift somebody gave you. I promise you, you do. Listen, I promise you, you do. If somebody just say, hey, I just want to put fifty dollars in your, I just want to bless you. You need to pay tithing off that fifty they just gave you. It does not matter. It's extra income. It's, it, it's income. It was more than what you had. Yes or right? Yes or right? It was more than what you had, so you're supposed to give off of that. Whether, like Miss Kristen said, whether it's the lottery, whether it's our, it's the uh, your tax returns, whatever it is, you're supposed supposed to pay tithing off of it. I bet y'all wish y'all had to click on this live today. I bet y'all wish y'all would be like, Lord, 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 I'm held accountable. Absolutely, but you already knew that, though. You already knew anything you get in extra is supposed. You're supposed to. Let me tell you something, because what bothers me the most. It's for somebody that this this uh the restaurants they start out at fifteen percent, but we willingly pay that 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 gratuity at the restaurant. But when God asks you for ten, you can't give him that, but you're willing to give this stranger that don't wake you up, that don't don't take care of you, don't make sure you got food in your house, you got gas in your car, you got a roof over your head. You don't mind giving him that fifteen, eighteen, twenty percent, but you mind giving God ten? Come on. What, what, what are we doing? When you think about it, when you think about it, just look back and you just be like, I do just go to the restaurant when they give me this, this ticket and they say 15%. I pay that. I don't care if it's a dollar and something. You still ask them more than I tell them. Y'all know y'all ask more than Jesus. And I'm going to give Jesus his before I come in here and give you yours. Now, why would I give somebody a stranger 15, 20, 25%, 18% or whatever it is, but I'm not going to give God his 10? That's crazy. That's crazy because this person, we don't know each other. I don't know your life. You don't know mine. You don't wake me up. You don't take care of me. So why am I going to give you this, but I can't give God his? It's just like, it's like common sense to me. That's just me. Okay, so <laughs> I'm on top of the dirt and dirty as it was. Come on. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Hadn't paid tithes in nobody else's first lady. Haven't paid tithes. Who ain't paid tithes? My Lord, today you need to do a podcast on stewardship. Listen. All right, Miss Kristen, you finna, I'm told you you don't start it some. I'm trying to go. I got to go. You about to start some. Uh, how God bless you with more and you are not faithful and responsible with what you have. That's what I'm saying. God's day, whis God's day whisper for those that just came in. Um, but um, you're absolutely right. People don't realize it, that the things that God has already given you, we got to be uh, um, be willing to accept or um, how do I want to put it? We got to be willing to um, 
keep hold on to that blessing God has blessed us with. We always looking over the over the fence or looking at somebody else's life and wishing we had it, or, or but you don't know their struggles on how they got there. You don't know how many times they missed paying their tithe and and God had took them down to their lowest, and you didn't see that journey. You didn't see them go through that. But now they at that point they are they at now, and you feel like you want them. Uh, you want that life that they have and you feel like it, it was it was just the easy transition for them to be where they are That's not true when God when he blesses you with something you be grateful for what you have at that time When you are grateful for it, God see your work and we always said I hard out here I do this and I do that I make this kind of money and I do but really What are you doing that is? Worth God being said if him saying, okay, well, let me bless you with more. Let me give you more. And we want more, but we don't know how to take care of this little bit that God has blessed us with. This little beat up car that we got, we ain't taking care of that, but we want a better car. We can't pay the car note on time, but we want a better car. We can't put gas in it and keep it clean or keep the maintenance up on it, but we want a better car. Why would God bless you with more and you can't take care of the little? It doesn't make sense to me. He is not the author of confusion. How he gonna, how you gonna take care of somebody of your uh, God's gonna take care of your house, but you're not taking care of his. Listen, you're not willing to give your money to help pay the electric bill at the church, to pay the gas bill at the church, to lead to, to keep the water on, to keep the maintenance in the yard, the the uh keeping the gra the grass cut, to keep the trash picked up, to be to be able to take the you're not doing anything to make sure the church go on. So you think God gonna bless you. With to take care of your house, these are just things that it's just like it got to make sense. In the words of Bishop Smith, and he know I, I tell him I give him his credit. It got to make sense. It got to make sense somewhere. You can't take care of his house. You're not putting a dollar on a gas bill or electric bill, but you got you come in and sit up, or you a dance the dirt. If Bishop say dance the dirt out the carpet, but you won't even help put a light bulb, buy a light bulb to put in the in the in the in the in the light thing. You won't even do that. You come in and you just, I'm happy and, you know, it is what it is. I'm serving God and I'll walk right on out the door. But you're not taking care of God's house. And you think God's going to take care of your house? That's not how he works. He is not the author of confusion. Now, because now you're confusing, you're allowing him to confuse other people. That you'll be like, how God blessing them? And how God keeping them? And how God, because you're trying to make my God out to be crazy. And he not, okay? I'm crazy, but... He not crazy. He not going to let you go through that. He not going to do that. And then he confusing other people. You think you're going to get more and you're going to treat God less? Okay, I'm from God. As I was stating a few minutes ago, <laughs> listen, I'm just saying, um, I'm just saying, people just, and, and my thing is, I told my husband this, and I think it was today or yesterday, I told him, I said, I'm fed up with the way people mistreat God. I'm over it. I don't come down now. <laughs> I feel my voice don't went down. Um, but I feel like. Excuse me, y'all. I feel like when God, um, the way God has been so good to all of us, each and every last one of us, um, we, we mistreat him so bad. And we thinking because we can say this to people in leadership or pastors or whatever, um, lying to them that God don't hear everything that that's being said. God hears everything that's being said. He know, like I said earlier, he know what you're thinking before you even you before even pop up in your brain. He know what you're gonna do. He know what your plan is. As I stated before, he know how many hairs is on your head. You don't know, but he knows. That's the type of God that we serve. But because we serve that type of God, it bothers me that God take care of us, especially this year. Excuse me. And all the years that I've been alive. This year has been a really trying year for everybody. And if somebody say, well, child, I ain't go through nothing. I didn't, and this and that or whatever. No, no, this has been a trying year for everybody because everybody's trying to dodge COVID. Even if you got it, you still was trying to dodge it. Even if you, God don't heal you from it, you still was trying to dodge this. But God has still been good to you because you're still on, to like, like I said earlier, and like Brown just said, you on top of the dirt and the dirt is not on top of you. Somebody's burying a loved one, but it's not you. Somebody's dealing with, with hurt, or, or, or um, dealing with some health issues or whatever the case may be, but you're not. And God has been healing you and taking care of you since day one. And for us to mistreat God or to do him bad or have an excuse on why we can't do better than what we are, we okay with this comfortable life that we're living. And God wants us to be better than what we are. He wants us to step up. 
these Christians that we say we are, the believers that we say we are, we're not going to let any naysayers or non-believers come in and change our mindset. Y'all stupid if y'all still gathering at church. Y'all dumb. If out of all things, I'm not going to let nobody talk down to me about how what I'm going to do about church. And if they, and like I said, you of course you're going to use your wisdom. Of course that. But when somebody sit up there and tell, call you all out, you, you know, you stupid or you dumb because you're still attending church. But if I can go to any other, if I can go to a store, I can go to a, a birthday party or go out to eat. Why can't I go to church? Why can't I go to the place where I know what God is? I know he, he everywhere. Don't get me wrong. But he everywhere. But he's when I say I'm, I'm coming in here because I'm coming to serve you, I want you to know, Lord, that I'm not fearing. I know you're going to take care of your child. I know you're going to take care of your kids. You're going to take care of your people because that's the type of God that you are. That's who we serve. And that's who we that's, that's This is what we, we know. And I trust and I believe in that. But you got people that, that, that run scared or they lie or they try to cheat God or they don't think God see it. I told you, uh, Pastor Key, I should have played that, and I'm probably going to find and let y'all hear it real quick before I get out of here. Um, but you got folks that want to they, they wanna hide from God or they think they hide from God because you you hide from your pastor or from your, your church members or whatever. You think you hide from God. God see you. Even when you in the corner, you covered up with a, with a, you in the bed and you covered up with a, he know you up under that cover. He see you. He still see you. He's everywhere. And he's the only th the only person that can be everywhere at the same time. So why do we why do we mistreat God? He don't mistreat us. Now he don't give us the things we want when we want it. He testing you to see if you deserve it. I told you a lot of stuff that we have we don't deserve. We do not deserve. But we, we, we in our mind because we work hard and we do this or whatever. I deserve this because I did. But what do you really when you ask God? Did I deserve that car? Because I know I done you wrong. I know I mistreated you. I know I didn't go to church like I should. I know I wasn't paying my tithing like I should. Did I really deserve that car? Do I even deserve to be on top of this dirt? Because I know I have not treated you right. I know I mistreated you. I know I said some stuff that I made somebody else not know. Or, or I didn't witness to somebody like I should have. I know I don't deserve to be on top of this dirt. But God, I'm grateful and I'm thankful that you kept me enough. I told you somebody went to bed last night and they didn't get up today. But you got up today. You got up today. Listen, when I tell you, uh, let me see if I can find this song real quick. Uh, um, I'm going to have to think of the name of it. <laughs> uh, it's an up-tempo song, but I love this song. It's old. It's a real old song, but it's but I, I the words of it is just like folks think that they can get away from God and you can't. I don't care how you look at it, you can't get away from God. Uh, lots of the pastors, we are treating the Lord like a sugar daddy. Miss Kristen, I can't fool with you. I I can't even fool with you. I can't fool with you. We treat God like a sugar daddy. Some people only call him when they need something. Let me play this song so I can get out of here. I'm gonna play it and I'm gonna get off because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play with you. Y'all probably heard this song before, but it's an old jumpy key song. It's an up tempo, but I like it because I really like the end. It's called Watching You, Pastor Jumpy Key. It's on this colorblind CD. I used to listen to this all the time. Sometimes in life we try to hide. Behind a portrait that's never been painted. Well, come on, John. That's your name. Yeah, you at the door. You don't want to change it, no. People listen. There's no sin on the look out. Your iniquity. Just in case you think you can know where you see. The God I serve, He watching you and me. Yeah. Let me get to the last part of what I was talking about. Try to justify and begin to cry, and then you don't mention I'm having a real hard time, and nobody can see it. He talking about his preacher man. I can see right through your bag. Take 
cái bao phô Here you go. Watch it with an open eye. You put it on daily, but you couldn't deny your sin. That the Lord did cleanse. But every time I turn around, you end up again, my friend. This is not a game. You're doing your dirt and you have no shame. But Zorn Dark will be in the light. You know that it's true, brother man. He's watching you. Come on, John. Anyway, y'all listen to that. I kind of skipped it. Come on, John! God's eyes is on you. I'm watching you. The Lord is watching you. Oh, listen, my boy. Yes! I gotta go. Yes! Oh, yes, she is. Yes, she watching you. See you go. You were all alone. But the Lord had his camera corner on. The Lord is watching. Got his eyes on you. And don't you forget it. Yeah, the Lord is watching you. You can't run. You can't hide. Whether you know it. He's at your side. Not as it matter the time of day. He's been watching you since you were a babe. <laughs> Some people think they can trick him. But unless you repent, he still got you on film. He forgave you once and saying you did repeat. You gotta be Listen, that's my jam. I'm about to listen to that in a few minutes. But anyway, I'm about to get off of here. I pray something today that was said that was to help y'all to carry on. Um, you, like I said, I always say you don't have to believe in what I say or don't have to trust. Just think about it. Um, use wise decisions on whatever you um, you do. With this virus that's going around with life itself. Um, choosing to make the right decision for you. Um so I just want to make sure that I told you all that. Like I said, I seen that and it disturbed me. Um, yes, he is. He's always watching. I'm telling you, when you don't think he's watching you, he watching you. When you're trying to be around the corner, up under, listen. Okay, I'm not going to go into that. But I'm just, I just want to make sure I put that out there. Um, that make wise decisions on whatever you're doing. Make sure that whatever you do, you put God first. Trust God. I, I, he's not going to ever fail you. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. He's always going to have your back. Believe in what he said. If you, you join back in later on, this is the replay. Y'all can go back and listen to it at the beginning and um, come back and watch it. Also, I have a podcast episode. It'd be easier for you to find because I do post a lot. Um, mm -mm, I can't listen to this because it's going to make me so find the tamarind. Uh, that song always get me into that mood of playing the tambourine. But listen, um, I know this is not something people like to talk about. And I know folks is going to feel a ways about it for those that may go back and listen to it again. I'm not trying to convert nobody over. I'm just trying to make us think more than what we are. We've been doing. I'm not trying to, you know, force anything down nobody's throat. I do this because God lays it on my heart. I seen it earlier today. My husband and I discussed it. And I felt like that was something that needs to be talked about or something that needs to be said. And um, we're so easily persuaded to do the wrong thing instead of doing the right thing and I know God is um he wants us to do the right thing he wants us to do what he say do not somebody else not no celebrity not nobody you know so again I'm you know I'm just a am just a messenger and I speak from what God has given me to say and like I said folks don't have to believe and I know a lot of folks clicked off especially when you start talking about tithing they don't want to hear about that I don't want to give no extra money I don't want to do none of that I, I can't force you, but I can only tell you and God will get you for what you're not doing. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. Um, I know it's not going to be a lot of people that's going to be like, hey, I'm, I, I like what you I, I know that because folks, I told you every time I talk about tithing, folks get feel a ways about that. I don't know what it is, but folks feel a way paying tithe and giving up extra money. Get your life together. Okay. So anyway, we're going to move on from that. So go back and listen to it for those that may have missed it. And y'all can just uh, watch it from the beginning. Again, I do have uh, these Apple AirPods. They are $100. They're $100. And um, these are the Generation 2. 
So, um, if you're interested in these, if you want to hold yours, that $25 deposit for each one that you want to hold. Um, and then until you get the, I hold on to them because you already made your deposit. Um, you cash out for Zelle, um, or if you see me or whatever meet up, you can still do that that way as well for those that may go through that way. If you order them online on my website, then it's shipping that's involved in that. Um, so I just want to make sure that I put this out there that I do have some and, um, uh, first come first serve. It is what it is. Um, and these are great Christmas gifts. And like I said, this is generation two. Um, so that's that. Um, also don't forget to listen in to the God Say podcast. The link will be attached to this video. Once I get off of here, go back and, um, click on it and you can follow us on all the social media platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. We're also on YouTube with whispers in the pews. Subscribe to that channel. Go in. If you have not already been an email subscriber to our website, please do so at godsday81.com. You can go on there and you can um, advertise your business, your church, your, um, your job information, anything that would be helpful or resourceful to anybody else. Please send me that information. The email address is godsday81 at gmail.com. Godsday81 at gmail.com. Check out the website, browse around, look around, get involved with the blogs. There are different blogs there. I will be uploading some more blogs, but I'm trying to, you know, y'all know how I do. Um, if you already email subscriber, you'll be the first to know that whatever is going on with God's day, you'll be the first to know before everybody else know any new blogs, products, etc. More things are coming, working on it, but you know, I got seven million jobs. So how is it that you want to harvest and you never plant seeds? Listen, oh, you know, I am Miss Kristen. I don't apologize for nothing that I say. Um, like I said, if God give it to me, I'm going to say it. And um, I know folks feel a ways about it. And, you know, I don't mind telling them. So you do know you're wrong. Because Lynn will say in a minute, I, what if I hold my tithe? And I'm talking about her because she on here. Uh, what if I hold my tithe and until next week? I say, what if God hold his blessing until after you 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 pay your tithe? What if he take you out before you pay your tithe? And that, that one time you don't pay your tithe and he send you right on the hill. Oh, okay. Because you know better. All right. We do better because we know better. All right. So anyway, I'm not going to prolong that anymore, <laughs> but I'm not, I don't apologize for nothing that I say. A lot of people just don't have to believe and they don't have to say, you know, believe in nothing that I say or trust it or whatever. And that's their, that's their prerogative, but I'm going to say it and I'm not going to apologize for it. So, and folks, why are you always talking about this? It is what it is. These are things that I'm not judging you. You know, I'm not going to judge you, on another, but I use you as an example because we have this conversation all the time and you don't mind. You don't get offended. Um, you got people that got soft feelings and you know, they be like, oh my gosh, she's talking about me girl boy sir ma'am grow up it's over with like come on and you know if i if i can say it to you if i say it on her i can say it to you so it's not a big deal and you know i know i'm not gonna sit up there and say let me tell you what she said to me and yada 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 i'm not gonna use that for that no i don't and i'm not gonna say that to people that are easily offended because i know how y'all are you know folks will call your husband tell your husband everything be like you know he your wife is on there talking about me baby no i'm not <laughs> but call me and ask me if it was that about you and you know i'll tell you Yes or no, if it was about you or, you know, so don't get, if people, oh, we're going to talk about being offended. One day I'm going to talk about being offended because, oh, people got soft feelings. You're just like, how you going to be a Christian and your feelings is soft? Like, man up, grow up, get this together. Okay, so I'm not going to go down that road. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying, you do, but you got some, offend, people get offended so, so easily. And you just be like, wow. That, that hurt your feelings by me saying that or that or those feel like when I'm on here that it's, it's talking about them and it's, it's not. But if I if it is, I don't like I said, I don't mind speaking up and saying, well, yeah, some of that was about you. But I didn't say your name or anything like that. So the only person that would know that is me and you. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so, again, check out the God's Day podcast. Those that are on the podcast, check out uh, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel, which is Whispers in the Pews. Check out our website, which is godsday81.com. Browse around, look around, check it out, see what you what's on there that you like or what you don't like. Tell me what I can do to make it better. Check out our blogs, our advertisement page. Also, check out our store page. Um, go ahead and order your God's Day journals. They are $5.00. And they're good for uh, stocking stuff for Christmas is around the corner. You need you some good God's Day products. You get you a t-shirt. You can get you a God's Day journal. We also have our pods. So please check us out. Of course, I got some more stuff coming in. 
but you know how the mail is when it get here it get here and i'm gonna let y'all know what it is when it get here um so just be looking forward to that kind of stuff and i pray today it was something that i said that was encouraging to you that was helpful to you that would help you to go on to be strong and to look forward to seeing god when the time is right when the time is when the time come you know who god is lift your head up hold your head up high don't let nothing or nobody disturb your spirit or what you got going on. If it, if it bothers your patience, it's costing you too much, okay? Cut it down, shut it down, lose it. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it bring you down to, listen, get out your feelings. Listen, and folks be like, that didn't hurt your feelings. No, I can't let little stuff, like, stop. Girl, go to bed. Don't let this stuff stress you out. Don't let people stress you out. Get that out. They stressing you out, cut them off. Like, let it go. Like, you don't let nobody stress you out or get you to that point. One, it comes before destruction and a, oh, I'm trying to see it, uh, a country spirit before a fall i'm sorry consider this a warning you got time to get yourself together and get right with god yes you do the time is now to get your life right with god why are we waiting what are we waiting on you waiting on your sister or your brother they might not ever get their life right god might take them out before it's time get your life right don't get yourself caught up in some stuff you see something ain't right turn around go the other way don't get yourself involved in this stuff watch your surroundings watch you okay wash your hands carry as less as you possibly can going in and out these stores it's the christmas spirit it's um, christmas spirit christmas time folks is out here doing their own thing as y'all been seeing but robberies everywhere folks is doing it watch yourself do what you got to do and get home don't even watch your surroundings like i said carry less as as, as much as you can if you got a crossbody a, a clutch or some a wristlet something that's small to to carry your stuff do that Watch your kids, okay? Watch all of these things. And nobody is safe from nothing, okay? Don't think because you you 12, nothing won't happen to you. It can. Um, I'm seeing a lot of missing kids here and there. Let's watch our list. Let's make sure we, we um, and pray for everybody. Folks is going through. Folks is going through some serious stuff. Don't think your, your situation is, is so bad that somebody ain't in a worse situation than you. That somebody got to make a decision over a family member that they don't want to have to do. But your family member is still with you. Look at God. Won't he do it? Listen. But uh, I'm going to get off of here because I got to go. I got some things I got to do. <laughs> I got to get into. Um, and plus, I got to... Listen, see, she's going to maybe get a tam. I want a tamarind right now. But I pray today is something that I said that was to help you and to encourage you for you to go on to be strong. Um, God loves you and he cares for you. He wants you to keep on holding your head up high. Don't give up. Um, if it's God's will, I'll be back tomorrow. Y'all stay safe out here. Do what God has called you to do. Um, do what she needs to mind her business. Don't even worry about her. Um, come on, sir. You better shout. Okay, I got to go. <laughs> but um, y'all watch these numbers. Um, like I said, protect yourself when you're going in and out these stores. Cover your face, cover your mat, cover your um, your nose and your mouth. Um, and make sure that you're staying safe. Make sure your kids are not touching any and everything. Wash your hands. As, this is things that we don't have to talk about and say because we already know to do these things. And be careful out here for real. Like for real, for real. Um, if you got to be on the phone, watch your, watch your surrounding as you're going in and out these stores. Don't have to be on the phone consistently. Walk on to your car, get lock your car up and drive on off. You don't know. I told you folks is out here changing lives in a matter of seconds. And if you if you pay attention and whatever you can do to get ahead and watch yourself, because I know a lot of times we so distracted by the phone, by texting and by doing all this other stuff. Shut that stuff down until you're in a safe place. You can get somewhere. Make sure your phone stay in charge. Make sure you're, um, you're um, somebody know where you are at all times. So when you leave in the house, say, hey, I'm going to run up here to such and such a place and let somebody know where you are. It's just about being safe. Nobody trying to be in your business. It's just about being safe. And somebody said, well, the last place I know they went to was such and such. They went up here to, and you can watch that, those kind of things. Because things out here is, I'm telling you, folks, it's changing lives in a matter of seconds. And we just want to make sure that we're being careful and make sure you know who God is. Okay. That's the biggest thing. Know who God is. Um, get your life right with him. Get saved. If you're not saved now, it's okay to give, give your life over to him. Surrender everything over to him. Don't worry about nobody else trying to see if you, what you're doing about getting saved, about getting your life in order, about getting, don't worry about that. This is a personal relationship between you and God. And if nobody understand that, it was time for them to move around, time for them to go. Okay, so don't you? I'm telling you, when when you, God release you of some things or some people that are not for you anyway, you are gonna feel a whole lot better. Don't even worry about it. Folks gonna talk about you whether you do it or whether you don't.
okay? Whether you're doing good or whether you're doing, you know folks still dog you out. Even when you're doing good, you you on top, you're doing some good things, and they, but they don't know how to be proud of you, so they talk about you. Oh, it's okay. Be somebody's role model, and you can be somebody's role model from a distance. I love it, okay? So be be good. God, got, God he's definitely caring for you. He's definitely watching out for you. He's been keeping you all this time, and he's not going to leave you, okay? Hold on to God's unchanging hands. Um, listen, so let, dip, dip, listen, go to bed. Don't worry about nothing. Go to bed. Get you some rest. Don't kill yourself trying to do something you can't change or nothing. Listen, y'all know how I go. Y'all know what I say. Um, so again, check out the guys day podcast, the website, the email address, and, um, check out our social media platforms. I will attach the link to this video. You can click on it and you can go on and listen to previous episodes that we have done. Please be release, let go and cut ties. Miss Kristen have to put that out there every day. Absolutely. Release, let go and cut ties. It hurts none. I'm, t I'm telling you, it's a blessing. You'll be smiling. You'll be like, why did I not do this a long time ago? It was timing. God wanted to do it in his time so you can appreciate what he did for you. Look at God. When he, when you can appreciate what God do for you, that's why the timing had to happen then. Because you'll look back and be like, God, you could have released me from these from this situation five years ago. But it wasn't time. You weren't going to appreciate it then. He had to wait so you can appreciate. Because now, when I tell you God released and cut ties and all that, it was time, okay? And when he did, I was like, I can appreciate this. So my husband here asked me about such, you know, the same season. He'd be like, you want to do such and such? And I'd be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> He'd be like, for real, I'm absolutely good. I'm absolutely good. I have, When God deliver you from a situation, you don't go back into it. When God take you away from a situation that you've been prayed out of, that he got you out of, you don't go back into it. Especially when you, listen. Okay, so y'all finna get me started again. I gotta go for real. <laughs> I definitely gotta go. I want y'all to stay blessed out here. Hold your head up high. Keep God first. If you need me, you know how to get in contact with me. Um, but by all means, please go back and listen to any of the things that we um, talked about or said. You can add your comments on blog and you can add your comments on as well. Um, I will be doing a new blog. It should be out by, by the weekend, okay? Um, well, before the weekend is up, let me say that because I got a lot going on. Um, I do want to say this, just in case I, I do forget. The Christmas party for New Freeman Chapel Missionary Baptist Church is on this coming Saturday at 6 o'clock p.m. You are more than welcome to come. We're going to do social distance. It's not going to be a lot of people. I'm going to tell you that now. We're going to have food, and we're just going to enjoy each other's company because we're family. So if you would like to come and be a part of this Christmas party this particular year, which is um, um, this coming Saturday, December 12th, which is Kyla's birthday. She'll be turning 17. Um, you'll be able to come. The address is 2219 Lamont Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. With a great, amazing one for pastors, none other than the Bishop Dwight Collins. We'd love for you to come on out and be a part of this great event. We're just going to enjoy each other's company and just, you know, do what we do. Um, also, I'm going to invite you over to the New Freeman Chapel Missionary Baptist Church on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m., our youth Sunday, so our youth will be in charge for their Christmas program. Um, you are more than welcome to come and be with us on Sunday as well at 11 a.m. And the address again is uh, 2219 Lamont Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. With a great, amazing, wonderful pastors, none other than the Bishop Dwight Collins. Please come through, check us out. Of course, we will be live. We will not be live for the Christmas party, but we will be live for the, uh, the Sunday morning worship. And you're more than welcome to join in with us virtually or be physically in the building. Um, Remember, God loves you. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.